life as a total ordinary guy reincarnated to a total fantasy. The f What's good, y'all? It's your main man, Master Cell here, leader of the Master Knights of the Round Table of Company One. Hit that spin move, just one spin because I'm on carpet right now, and subscribe because you know what's up. Subscribe to the Round Table. Isekai train has continued. And not only has it been a bumpy ride, let's be honest, yesterday we completely fell off the train tracks. Now I'll be real with y'all, I have had more or less a problem remembering which shows this season coming out was Isekai's. If you can't judge the anime by its cover or a manga by its ass, and just looking at the initial picture doesn't always mean it's Isekai. However, with the title of this show being the title that it is, if it didn't completely give it away, then your anime card has been revoked. With that being said though, despite my initial intro to this video, I have to say, out of all the isekais I've seen this season so far, this one is the most low BS. Because the intro to this show was really the best thing it could have done. It's funny because I talked about Tribe 9 last week being all show not tell. This show was the opposite right in the beginning, yet it did it in a way to get the bullshit out the way. Off jump, they jump into this show, and with conversation, we understand our two main characters, Tashibana and Juji. I know I'm saying his name wrong. They were both men in their past life. However, Tashibana, which is typically a girl's name in anime, anyways, was reincarnated into a female, a cute female that fit his description of what a woman should be. Walking down that road, trying their best to convince themselves that they're not falling for each other. Which is when the narrator of the show itself lets you guys know, yes, you are in for the ride of a romantic comedy of two guys. I cannot tell you, uh, me and Chaz and Joe Strix went over the show on that, we did that video. And it happens every so often, and honestly, I can't remember the last one since Love Stage. But the yaoi of the season is here. And like I said, this show doing that was indeed the best thing it could have done. Cause with the legit trash, and normalcy of isekais that's been coming out this season alone, let alone the last few years. This show is just straight up like, hey, hey, don't ever worry about that. Could this show be in the romantic comedy y'all about two guys not trying to follow each other, follow each other even though one that was being comedy as a female is their focus point. If you take away the exact ending of the episode where they start to get experience points for the stuff they was doing, this show by no means is an isekai. Or at least that's not what this show at all cares about. We have too many shows out here that is an isekai trying to be an isekai is what I'm saying. This show made itself an isekai just so it has an excuse to tell the story that it is now. If this show didn't have to be an isekai to pull it off, it would not have. Now getting into the show itself, our main characters, our boy Juji, yeah. tall, broad, shoulder, grassy dude with a good face. You've seen this kind of before. Get, could get all the women in the world, don't care about a single one of them. And Tashibana, the short, low physique male with hair covering his face. Lack of confidence, couldn't get a girl to save his life. And these guys are such good best friends. The fact that they're not getting any women, they blaming on each other. Cliches are starting to settle in. But they have been best friends for 25 years. No one each other since they were seven, because they're both 32. In an office job, trying to figure things out. Hate to be this guy, but it's ironic, so I'm gonna say it. As a guy who tries hard to relate to characters and find some character building when it comes to shows, I am nothing like either one of these two guys, and I love it. I'm younger than both of y'all, make more money, have better luck with girls, and probably is better looking. I am character development. What am I talking about? Anyways, in a drunk frizzy outside of a mixer, Okay, swingers, right? The isekai trope selling in because our homeboy Tashibana's on the floor because he can't get a woman, he might as well be one. I'm nothing like either one of these characters, I hope you are too. Here comes the goddess. Yeah, the isekai tropes are real there. Actually, most isekais don't even do this no more. Which is weird because top isekais do. Y'all are missing the point. The goddess of love shoots her arrow, Cupid ass, at Tashibana, about to kill him. But granting his wish that he made in a drunk frenzy, which he points out later in the episode was completely invalid. Whatever I say drunk, you do not suddenly make come true. I don't care if I said it before, I don't care if I'm lit at a con, I don't care if I'm at the house on New Year's Eve. I'm nothing like these main characters and I'm happy. But basically in a hint to try to save his best friend, he jumps in front of the arrow and Tachibana and Jirishi both get sent to the world, but only Jirishi is still himself, completely. Nothing's changed by him. And Tachibana has been turned into the woman, which, kind of clears up all my complaints at the beginning of the show because I didn't know why the homeboy would did not have them. Mm -hmm. Now the only last real big thing to talk about in this episode really is the fact that because they pissed off the goddess who was a fuck bitch, they had a curse put on them and apparently they don't know what that curse is. Now they assume that the curse is to make it possible for them two to fall in for each other because, you know, goddess, right? 
God is a love, I meant. And she wants them to defeat the Demon King. Yes. There's actually more relatable things to this show, and don't give me no life the more you think about it. If they defeat the Demon King, the curse is off of them. Homeboy goes back to being a guy, which is kind of weird, because, like, then you killed them in their real lives. Otherwise, they would. Oh, shit, I'm a shrimp. Otherwise, they will remain how they are now. Which is the default because they're dead. There's holes in the story, there is. But once again, the holes in the typical East Sky story does not apply here. Because like I said, that's the episode. Because the rest of the episode is them really just walking through the forest. And yes, they get confronted by a monster, bear type thing. Which kind of was terrifying, to be honest. They go through the cliche tropes of a guy and a girl that tries not to fall for each other per se. Actually, no, that's not even it. The normal cliche tropes of a guy and a girl that they have to go through, like the girl falling over, she needs some help, needs to get picked up, does she look cute this way, does she look manly this way, he, he answered so comfortably. Basically how an anime man and an anime woman starts to fall for each other when they do these tropes that make it seem like they're not. And the reason why that's a good bread and butter for this show is because they take those anime cliches and try to debunk them. That's the kicker for the show. Like, all the normal cliche stuff that happens in the Ishai cliche, Ishai cliches, Ishai cliches, romantic comedy cliches, and I, well, I don't, I don't really never finish with Yaoi, so I really have no idea what Yaoi cliches are. They take those and try to throw them out the window, almost in an insulting manner, to be honest, which is where the comedy rolls in. An anime taking the worst parts of anime is just stepping on them is funny. I, I don't care. I, if, you, if, you, if, you don't, if you don't agree with me there, you haven't seen enough shows. And this show doesn't take itself seriously at all. Last time I'm gonna say it, the intro to this show do all that crap out the window. You don't take this show seriously. It's a romantic comedy. You're supposed to find things funny. They're supposed to be throwing stuff at you that they don't normally throw at you. And it's just like, good. An isekai not trying to be an isekai. A romantic story about two guys who are not trying to be romantic at all, but stuck in a certain situation, all succeeded in being a comedy. At the end of the day, you have a show that is every dig it tells you it is. And finally, like I said, low BS. Because rather than trying to find things you like about the show, it's really much harder to find things you dislike. To find less bad things to say about the show is very much, you know, a seller. A selling point. Now, of course, the premise of an isekai with two guys trying to throw some yaoi and strange things into there. Off gate, off jump, just, just reading that is going to be very off pity to most people. But at the same damn time, if I had to be 100% honest, if I had to watch Isekai this season, this show is different enough for every other piece of crap that came out this season so far. This is the one. This is for originality. This is pretty much the Isekai of the season as far as I'm concerned. Week one. There you go. How's that for a plot twist? The similar hentai failed, but the Yaoi did it. Made Dick speak confused in 2022. If you watch this video, email a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I will see y'all. Mm -hmm. One more spin move. Aha. Subscribe to the round table. And, mm -hmm.